Welcome back on the mat. So for our practice today, two blocks will come in handy. It's not a must, but it will definitely make one specific sequence a little bit easier. We'll start in a downward facing dog, so you can put the blocks aside for now. Get into your down dog as you do so. We'll walk it out, feel into your body, feel into your legs, perhaps into your shoulders. Feel the hands gripping the mat, making firm contact with the floor. We're going to be making use of our, as we call, hasta bandas, our hand locks on the mat. Same with the feet, just feel the pada bandas or the feet locks, energy locks, firmly making contact with your mat. Get into a normal down and facing dog. Bend your knees, look up on in breath position, feet between hands. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, take arms to ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. Link breath and movement. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, empty your lungs into a forward bend. In breath, halfway. Plant your hands on exhale, step or jump back. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And you always have the option to modify any of these postures. If it's not chaturanga, it's knees, chest, chin. If it's not upward facing dog, it's cobra pose, meaning knees on the mat. Even some of the lifts we'll be doing, you can modify. What you can't modify whatsoever is the breathing pattern. I want it to be consistent. That is the primary focus here. And bending into knees, look up. Inhale, feet between hands. Halfway lift and exhale, fold. Inhale, bend knees, arms go up. Exhale, mountain pose. Get your feet hip width apart. Place hands onto waist. Inhale, lift and chest. Exhale, leaning forwards. Pistol grip the big toes as you exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to mat, step or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Now bend into knees, look up. Inhale, feet in between hands. Halfway lift. And exhale, forward bend. Bend into knees, place your hands underneath your feet. You might want to separate the feet just a little bit. Traditionally speaking, it's hip distance. We're keeping them closer together. Exhale, forward bend. Shoulders pulling towards your waist. Inhale, softness in the knees, looking up. Exhale, step or jump back, lower down chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, to a downward facing dog. Now walk your hands more to the back of the mat and then place your knees down. We'll be turning sideways on the mat. I'm gonna give a quick demonstration. We'll get more comfortable with floating feet off the mat working our way to the top of the mat, and then working our way back. So I turn sideways. I place my hands slightly or say more in line with the foot that's closest to the front of the mat. I bend into knees, I place the hands down. I push through my shoulders, keeping the arms straight, get onto the toes, 
and that's when there's a bit of a lift. So I reach, place the hands down, lift, bring the feet down, reach, hands down, push, lift, softly down. Another one, lift and down. And we'll make our way to the back of the mat. So slow it down as much as you can. The more you do it, the more you'll gain that control. Don't forget about lifting from the base of the spine. That's what's going to give you more hang time if the activation is done in the right fashion. So you can even place your hand more or less in line or to the center of the feet, the one hand, if you don't want to take it too wide. So bend into knees, play with the idea, even if it's not as elegant, just do what you can. Placing the hands down, hasta bandas, lift and bring it down. Hands down, take it up and down. Keep going. It's an inhale to lift. Once you get to the top of the mat, you change rotation or you take it to the opposite side. Inhale up. I'll do one more round, even if the shoulders are getting tired. Lift. All the way to the back of the mat. And then you can bring your knees back down onto the floor. This is where we'll start with one block. Get the block more or less where your head was placed in child's pose. If you had to have your feet in the same position where you usually have your feet in a downward facing dog. And you take your hands out in front, downward facing dog, hands on the mat. Take it up into a down dog. If it feels a little bit scary to have the block facing up, long way up, and you can flip it down. So the idea is to do a bit of a jump and get your feet over the block so you can bend into knees, look up, inhale, jump, legs together in the air, bringing your feet down. As you do so, you can simply step back, you can probably jump back, but if you feel as if you want to challenge yourself more, take the block forward slightly. Controlled movements, you're not rushing, it's a normal down dog stance. You'll bend knees, look up, use the inhale, use the breath to take yourself up. And then as you land, you can step it back. Maybe you want to take it a little bit further. Into the knees as you bend, look up, use the inhale. And then take it back, one more, maybe move the block up a bit more for a bit more hang time, a bit more discipline to get over that block, bending into the knees, look up, use the inhale, halfway lift, exhale forward bend. You can take the block aside, step it back, place knees down sit back onto the heels. So, now we'll be using both blocks. The idea is gonna be to lift everything up as much as possible, and then we'll add in the jump through sensation. Wherever you get stuck is where you get stuck, and that's fine. But I'm gonna give a few pointers. So, hands will be on the blocks. Usually, I like to do this without blocks, but I know this comes in handy for students to have the blocks on the mat. So the knees can be in line with the blocks. You cross the legs, so the bottom leg will pull up into your body in order to lift a little bit. As you push away from the floor, push out of your shoulders, see if you can bring everything up. If it's not happening, then keep your feet on the mat. Keep pushing, draw navel to spine, especially from the base of the spine, and then bring it back down. We'll do one more. We're gonna see if we can take it up from a seated position. We'll do two more for that matter. Hands onto the blocks, push out of your shoulders, see if you can take everything up. Get the bottom leg to work, then bring it down. 
Once again, if you don't lift, you don't lift. And that's fine. One more. Push. See if you can take it up. The breath is strong. Exhale, bring it down. Now get to a seated position. Blocks will now be slightly in front of the pelvis. If you had to have the blocks right here, you're not going to be able to lift as high. So blocks slightly in front. You can cross your legs. The idea is going to be to pull legs into your body, to cross not at the ankles, but by the knees, squeezing in towards the midline and pulling knees into your body. At the same time, we'll push, see if we can lift everything up. Don't feel rushed with these movements. Quality over quantity. So draw navel to spine, position hands onto blocks, cross your legs, push, lift, keep breathing. Bring it down. Cross legs the other way around. Same sensation, you're pulling legs in towards the body as you push out of shoulders. Hands onto blocks, crossing. Inhale, push, lift. Exhale, bring it down. So now, we did the initial lifting part. We did the second part where the body is sort of getting the chest forwards, legs underneath the body. Now we need to shoot it back. So in order to not get your feet to not be on the mat, you can move forwards. We'll do the exact same thing. I'm gonna lift up, get to the second phase, which we started with, and maybe shoot the legs back. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So blocks on the floor, cross your legs, push into the blocks, lift everything up, shoot your legs back. You know, you can do a bit of an up dog. Exhale into a down dog. You can take the blocks aside. As you do so, lower your hips into plank. Maybe plank feels a little bit easier than usual now. And breath is deep, controlled. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And one more little jumping sensation, getting the idea. We'll be jumping feet behind the wrists. You can even turn the feet out to the side slightly. But the idea is to lift up from the base of the spine. Spend a bit of time in the air. So bend into the knees, look up. Use the inhale, take it up. Exhale, you come down. Step it back. We're gonna do three more. Bending into knees, look up. Full inhale to take it up. Coming down. You can step it back, two to go. Just playing with transitioning. Bending into knees, look up. Inhale. Coming down. Last one, maybe you can hold it a little bit longer. Potentially slowing it down more. Bending into knees, look up. Inhale. Coming down. On the exhale. Hands to prayer coming up. This is where blocks can come in handy. If you don't have the flexibility, you can pop the blocks underneath and stay here. If not, hold your malasana. Exhale, bring your hands down. Step it back. Downward facing dog. Bending into knees. Look up. Inhale, feet between hands. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, take arms up. 
exhale, mountain pose. Now we'll do our final bit of lifting. What about the uh, straddle lift? The position of the blocks onto the mat once again. If you're not using blocks, you're not using blocks and it's fine. But if you have blocks, step onto the blocks carefully. This is instantly going to help elevate the hips a bit more. Now, if you don't have the flexibility to get the palms onto the floor, you'll bend into knees. So it will look something like this. But even with the legs bent, the hips are still a bit higher. If you have the flexibility, you'll place the hands still on the mat. So you don't want to get the hands out too far. It's going to be more difficult to get the hips up. Hand shoulder distance. As you plant the hands down, tuck your elbows a little bit so you feel lat engagement. Now, from being on the blocks, we want to get to tippy toes and see if you can float the feet, even if it's just for a second. Let's see. Gripping the mat, get up onto your toes, push, suck navel to spine, see if the feet lift. And then you can just repeat. Maybe you can hold it a bit longer. So just keep getting that sensation. Suck navel to spine. Use your inhale, push into the hands, lift, lift, and bring it down. Maybe you can take it a little bit higher. Plant, push, suck, lift, and bring it down. Avoid jumping as much as you can. We'll do one more. Placing the hands down, push, suck, take it up, and bring it down. Now, to get out of this one, let's maybe just make use of being on the blocks. Place your hands directly below the shoulders. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward bend. Keep your elbows tucked. In our halfway lift, should you want to do one more for fun, you can, placing the hands down, pushing, lift, 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 and bring it down. Getting off the blocks, put your blocks aside. Let's get back into a downward facing dog. On this down dog, you'll simply tuck your elbows, bend your arms, place your forearms onto the mat. Push to the back of the mat, look up in between the thumbs. Keep pushing out of your shoulders. Now use the inhale. Bring your chin in between thumbs. Exhale, push back. Inhale, chin between thumbs. Exhale, push back. Inhale. Exhale. Two to go. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale, bring your knees down, we'll be getting into all fours, turn your fingers out to the sides, shift weight from left to right. Now turn your hands so the fingers point back to the knees, shift weight back and forth. Back to center, turn your hands, normal down dog hands on the mat, tuck your toes, take it back into down dog. Inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, place right foot in between hands. Find your balance. Next, inhale, come up, arms alongside the body. Entire body parallel to the floor if you can. Bend your back knee, find the ankle with your right hand. Reach with the left hand down to the floor. Look over the right shoulder and kick the leg back. It's a bit of a quad stretch, really. Look down to the floor. Let go of the ankle. Make your way back up into the previous phase. Now, bend into your grounding leg, squat down quite low, and if there's a way, get the heel to not touch the mat. Back leg is still active. Now bring the heel down, step your foot back, 
hands down, you can do your vinyasa, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, raise your left leg. Exhale, position foot between hands. Find your balance coming up. Balancing on the left foot. There's subtle engagements in the core. You're focusing on one spot. Bend the back knee. Find the left ankle or the right ankle with the left hand. Bring your hand down. Look over the left shoulder, kicking back. Look down to the floor. Let go of the ankle. Get back into the previous phase. Now bend into the grounding leg. Lift your left heel off the mat. Exhale, heel down, step back, hands down. 10 chaturangas, or maybe none, or five, maybe even knees on the mat. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale two. Inhale up. Keep going. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale four. Inhale up. Five. Inhale up. Six. In breath. Seven. Up, eight, up, nine, up, one more, exhale down, and I'll back up. Knees to mat. As you do so, we meet in a down and facing dog. Get your feet mat width apart, hands shoulder distance. Inhale, lower hips into the side plank. Shift a bit of weight onto the left hand. Float the right hand off the mat. Don't lift the right hip, keep the hip down. That's why we've got a wider stance to make it a bit easier. Bring the right hand down. Shift weight to the right hand. Get the left hand just off the mat. Exhale, bring it down. Take your hips back up. Bend the knees and jump your feet together. Work your heels closer to the floor. Now inhale, lower hips into plank. Bend into your knees. Tilt your pelvis. Take a full inhale through your mouth, at least nose. Exhale with an open mouth. <sighs> Feel the contraction in your core. Hold that position. Exhale, take it back up. Get your feet hip distance in normal downward facing dog. Placing knees onto the mat, finding your blocks. So, just like we picked up the entire body to get it back into Chaturanga, or we'll aim to do the same movement just from a down dog. So, you place your blocks on the mat. The idea is to jump into seated, and with the hands being on blocks, you don't even have to get the legs all the way through. You can maybe jump, sort of stop there, and come down. So that's perfectly fine. If you find that the block is slippery on the mat, then I'd suggest to rather just have hands on the floor. 
my case, I feel like the blocks might be a bit slippery for this one. But if the blocks are fine, keep your hands on the blocks. Exactly like what I'm demonstrating now, you bend into knees, you look up, use your inhale to jump, bring your entire body through into seated. You want to get everything through into a seated position. If you get stuck, it's fine. Stop where you get stuck and then simply straighten the legs. You can then put the blocks aside. Flexing both feet. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, leaning forwards. Find the outsides of the feet or your wrist into a forward bend. And working your chest closer to your legs, maybe even bending in the knees to get the sensation of chest touching, and then slowly but surely straightening the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, let go. Step your heels onto the mat. Find your feet once again. Sit back slightly. Straighten your legs. If you don't have the flexibility, you'll simply keep them bent. Focal point towards the big toes. Lengthening in the spine. We'll keep this very same grip. Take a nice full in breath. Exhale, part the legs. The chin is slightly up. Maybe you changed your dress tee. When you moved from this posture to, well, from the previous posture to this one, but find a spot to focus on. The chin slightly up. You can let go of the feet, but don't bring the legs down. Very slowly bring your legs down. And as you do so, reach forwards, hinge in the hips, and take it into a forward bend. Breath is nice and strong. Your feet flexed, toes pointing up, quads active, with the heels pushing into the floor. It's almost as if you drag your body forward. Inhale, lifting in the chest. Exhale, release. Bring your legs out in front. Exact same posture we did by taking the chest forwards or the upside down, taking the legs over. Tops of the feet resting on the floor. If you are not comfortable in this one, simply take your legs up lying on your back. Just don't turn your head while we spend time in halasana. Interlacing the fingers and working the hands down is also an option. You can also keep your hands on your back for support. In order to get out of the posture, simply part the hands, slowly start to curl down onto the mat, one vertebra at a time. Your heels will be the last thing 
and I'll make contact with the floor. Now step your feet onto the mat. As you do so, just move your knees from side to side. Coming back to neutral position, just hugging your knees in. And you can grab hold behind the backs of the knees, rock up and roll back. Massaging your spine. And then as you relax back, just take your knees over to the right, arms out to the sides. Your gaze is in the opposite direction. And I'll back to center. Exhale, taking knees over to the left, gaze to the right. And I'll bring it back to center. You can grip hold behind the backs of the knees, make your way up into seated. Before we do corpse pose, we will sit in a normal, comfortable seated position. Traditionally speaking, you can get into a full lotus should you wish to take a leg up, opposite leg up. That's an option. Bring the pads of the index fingers and thumbs together. Stretch your arms out in front. Stretch. The remaining fingers out in front. Now just lightly bring the backs of the wrists down onto the knees. You're just using enough energy to keep the arms straight. Lift in the chest. It's almost as if you're pushing the backs of the arms slightly into the knees. Lifting in the chest. Bring your chin down towards your chest. Imagine that you want to grip hold of your shirt with your chin. Keep your eyes open, keep the chin lock, and deepen your breath as much as possible. Feel your chest expanding on the inhales, the abdomen being still, and the opposite happening, that falling sensation on the exhales. One more inhale and exhale, take your time. Mm -hmm. 
You lightly bring your chin back up and it's time to relax back into corpse pose. The difference now is that the breath can be absolutely natural. Simply relax back. You can close your eyes as well. So the body's completely relaxed and you just spend a moment here before we carry on with the day.